masterclass, one of 21 masterclasses in new consciousness, a series aimed at exploring new ways of thinking, being and doing in today's rapidly changing world. We're all of us doing our best to observe the current guidelines for our physical safety, but what about when it comes to the spiritual laws that are there to keep us calm and protected? Are we equally paying attention to those spiritual principles? My name is Philippa and I'll be with you throughout this series as we listen to speakers, meditators, yogis from countries right around the world. People from all backgrounds, from all walks of life, many different experiences. Each one of them will be sharing with us their tools for navigating this challenging period of time. Each one of our speakers is a student and a teacher of the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. Um, as the name suggests, it's a university for the spirit, a place where you learn about the self, about the soul. The Brahma Kumaris was established in India in 1936 with a series of visions and teachings that came through the original founder, Brahma Baba. Teachings which are aimed very specifically to this transitional period that we're all going through and we're all experiencing at this time. The founder, Brahma Baba, decided quite early on that it should be women who were put in front, making the Brahma Kumaris the largest spiritual organisation of its kind to be led by women. Well, today's topic is inner peace, inner power. And it's an interesting thing to think about the connection between peace and power, not necessarily two words that you would put together. Whenever I think of the word peace, I'm reminded of the story of the queen who lost her favourite pearl necklace and she sent her courtiers out into the kingdom to look for it. And they went into the deepest jungle, they went to the highest mountains, they went everywhere that they could think of to find this pearl, precious, precious pearl necklace. And then a small boy in the Queen's court said, but your majesty, what's that around your neck? And of course, it was the precious pearl necklace. It had been around her neck the whole time. And peace is very much like that. We think that we will find peace when we have the perfect house to live in, we're doing the perfect job, we have the perfect relationship, or we can somehow change our environment to make us peaceful. But actually, peace is something that if we look within, that is the place that we will find it. Well, today's speaker is very much going to take us into this experience of peace. He's Enrique Simo, who has been a student of the Brahma Kumaris for over 30 years. He's currently the coordinator of the Brahma Kumaris at the centre in Madrid, and he works as an executive coach and is a facilitator in leadership development programmes, travelling throughout Spain. Spain and throughout the world actually for his work. His specialism is positive thinking, spiritual intelligence, inner leadership and helping other people to reach their personal goals. And if you're not feeling peaceful right now in this moment, I can pretty well guarantee that by the end of this session you will be feeling peace because Enrique makes you feel peaceful just <laughs> listening to him speak. So Enrique, thank you for joining us for thank today's Masterclass. Thank you very Masterclass. much. Thank you very much, Philippa. I hope you don't mind me making a guarantee on your behalf of, <laughs> of making everyone feel peaceful. It's a big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> So in a way, peace is possibly the last thing that many people are feeling right at this moment, because so many have been trying to work from home, trying to help children with their homeschooling, relationships in a very cramped space are coming under strain and pressure, and everyone has been feeling actually quite fractious. What, what's your experience of the lockdown been and how people have been coping with it in Spain? Yes, uh, yes, what you say uh, is very right. Um, there are many experiences and many perspe different perspectives. Many people are experiencing fear and worry about the future and of the, also of the present. But also it's very interesting how uh, other people are getting connection between themselves. No, Some families, they are close together, uh, which were not before. So they have the opportunity to, to communicate more closely and to get more uh, close to each other. So there are different perspectives, but main, mainly uh, most of the people are, are experiencing some kind of worry or fear of, about the future. 
But I would say that even before the lockdown, because I work with executives, people, women and men, very, very smart. They, they, they uh, achieve a lot of uh, success in their career. But when I coach them, the main thing that they want to coach with, to, to work with me is about serenity, peace and calmness. Because they achieve, they have achieved many things in their lives, but they don't have this energy inside themselves about peace, calmness, and they have a lot of anxiety. So I am surprised that I am attracted to the people who are very smart, very good at job, so they didn't need to do something better, but they need to find themselves a little bit more inside and find this, uh, this energy that is so precious, no? The energy of peace, the energy of serenity, the energy of calm, and so useful. For me, it's very practical. It's not something only spiritual, but it's spiritual bringing to practice, because peace is, is really a power. It gives you the power to do many other things in a different way, in a different perspective, in a different manner. No? It's true. Feeling peaceful is actually nothing to do with having a lot of money or exactly. having external success. And, exactly. and in fact, that can sometimes make it harder. But I, I wonder whether this process that we've all been through of this tremendous pause, this global pause, this stopping, this being still, whether this will have given people a taste of that inner experience of peace. But also at the same time, when you do stop and you don't have the normal distractions, the things that you go and do to keep your mind busy and active, actually some of your own stuff from within you can start to come up and, and hit you in the face. Exactly. Sometimes when you are uh, doing actions all the time, you don't see what is inside. But when you stop, you, do, you are not distracted or active, then you can see what is inside. And sometimes you don't like what you see inside yourself. So this is why we need to share the knowledge, no? the spiritual knowledge that we have learned with many people. This is at least my purpose, uh, so that we can help them no? to understand that there are things inside that you will not like, but there are other things that if you tap into them, you will like it a lot and you will experience something very different in your life. No? And it's true that this lockdown has given the opportunity to many people to have space for themselves. We are doing programs online every day and we were so surprised at so many people. One day it was 1,500 people connected with a meditation. This would never happen uh, before, no? So we are really surprised that people, they, they, they have the time now, they want to practice, they are open to practice, they are asking for, for these activities. So I think it's a very, very good opportunity to raise the, the consciousness of the general people. So the world will, will raise the consciousness and let's see what will happen after that, because something different, I'm sure the reality will be not the same like before. I don't know exactly what will happen and, and I don't, I think no one knows exactly what will happen, but I'm sure that something very different. And if you put in your, in the positive perspective, constructive perspective, it will be something very, very uh, positive and, and uh, uplift for the people, no upliftment for the people, at least in the, in the, in the consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's true, many people are saying that they don't actually want to go back to their lives mm -hmm. as they were because they're realizing now having stopped that it was actually unsustainable that, exactly. that it was it was an embarrassment of luxury of consuming exactly. material things of of keeping busy of keeping distracted and people have had a chance to experience something different mm -hmm. but i'd like to just ask you how you coach people through this process of of when you do decide to to stop and sit in silence how do you cope with with that rush of meeting yourself coming back the other way and mm -hmm. and as you say sometimes not liking what you see because that's the moment where people switch some music on or find the distraction because they don't yeah. like what they're feeling when they sit in silence yes it's true what you say and this is why we have to be I have to be very careful not to introduce all these things very slowly and of course at the beginning this is not the main topic we, we, we start to talk and to explore a little bit what, what are the thoughts that this person has, what are the, especially the dialogue, what is your dialogue, your inner dialogue, how you talk to yourself, because uh, dialogue is thoughts, you create thoughts and you create a dialogue, and this dialogue is influencing you in the way you feel, in the way you relate with others, in the way you, you see the world. So many people are, don't, they, they, they are not aware of the dialogue that they have, 
And sometimes they, they express it through the words without even noticing. And then I say to them, you have heard what you have said? No. I remember one, one woman, she's very smart, and she said, oh, I'm stupid, and continued to talk. And I say, you have heard yourself? She said, no, what have said? I say, you have said you are stupid. Do you see how you talk to yourself? I've said this to myself, yes. So she was not aware of her inner dialogue, no? So the first thing is to help them to observe inside themselves what is happening there, what kind of dialogue they have. And then to teach them to create a new dialogue, a dialogue more positive, more compassionate, more uh, empathetic with themselves, so that slowly, slowly they go inside, because the secret is to learn from outside to go inside. And they usually they are not used to go inside. They are so focused on producing things and getting results and doing things. They are very, 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 very good at that. I learned a lot of things about them also, no, in this sense. But the, the thing is that they need to go a little bit inside. So it's a process of slowly, slowly, and then helping them to create this inner voice, positive inner voice, and also guiding them sometimes through a simple exercise of just reminding them that peace is a good energy, that they can remain in calm, helping them to breathe, to relax a little bit. So very simple things, but there are things that they are not used to that. Sometimes they are not aware of their breathing, and they breathe very, very, uh, I think you say shallow, shallow, no? shallow exactly. Shallow. So in the moment they breathe a little bit more deeply with consciousness, or with awareness, oh, they say, well, this is, this is something different. And then slowly, slowly to go inside and help them to be the detached observer. When they, when they practice a little bit to be the detached observer, to be detached a little bit for actions and to be able to observe what is happening for them is really the, the world changes because in the meetings, in the conversations with other people, when they, they learn this art of being a little bit separated, creating a little bit healthy distance from what is happening and what they are observing, then they give them space, no? space to decide, space to think a little bit better, space not to react and to respond. So really it's uh, little things, slowly, slowly, step by step, but for them is really something that for some of them, they have changed. They say, I've changed my life in this sense. So many things have changed now. My perspective of life is different. And they con still continue to be very busy because they are, have high positions and they are very demanding these positions. But they have some tools that they can use at special moments and they feel they are very helpful for them. And also, they can experience a little bit this energy you know, of peace and when they get this energy, they know that this energy exists. And for me, this is very important, not to give them an experience, to allow them to experience something, not only to think about something or to understand them something, but go a little bit deeper and have the feeling of peace, the feeling of serenity, the feeling of calmness. And some of them, they are surprised. I remember in, in India, I was in India in December, and I gave a, a talk, well, it was a, a, a workshop, for CEOs of different companies. There were a group of around 33 CEOs of different companies, of IT companies in Hyderabad. And uh, we did a meditation, uh, and I suggest a long meditation, not five minutes, but longer. So we did a long meditation, they enjoy very much, and one of them came after the meditation, after the, after the workshop, and she was, he was very surprised. He was, I've never experienced in my life this. My mind was quiet. My heart was quiet. I was completely in peace, like being in another place. And I say, well, this is, this is the experience that you can get in meditation. So he was excited. No, I want more. I want more. So when they get a taste, no, they get a taste of what is real peace. Because as you said, peace is not, yes, we can find peace outside in the nature or in a nice place, but it's very limited and it's a very superficial peace. It's nice because you are in a nice environment, but maybe your mind is not so peaceful. But when you tap into this inner peace, inner silence, inner, it's so beauty, no? It's, it has a so sweet taste. I like it very much. I love peace. It's because I, ha I, haven't, I haven't had peace before. So when I had the experience of having peace, I wanted also more and more and more, no? So when they get well, this taste, they enjoy very much. Yes. 
we're going to be experiencing some meditation in, in a little while. Okay. But it might be nice just to hear a bit about your own journey, mm. whether as a child you were naturally very peaceful and whether this kind of meditative life has, has always been there for you or, or whether it was something that you experienced and how did you experience it when it happened for you? Mm -hmm. I, I always... I, I realized this after, no, when I started my spiritual journey, but I always had this kind of uh, search inside myself. Even when I was a, a child, I had inner conversations and I, I, I said that I was conversing with God. It, it was very innocent conversations, but it was an inner talk with someone who was not here in this world and who was understanding me and it was like a friend. no. So I had this kind of inner conversations. But then when I was a teenager, everything was forgotten and I was completely uh, immersed in a completely different life, going outside at night, arriving, arriving very late at home and drinking and all these things, no? So I, I, I spent like six years like this, very intense life, traveling also around the world. I get married, I had a child, a daughter, but my mind was exploding at some point. So after six years of doing all these things, I went back to my parents' home and I say, please, I can stay here for a while because I need to recover. I need to reflect. I need to do something with my life because I'm not happy. So they say to me, of course, yes, you can stay. And then I start to search, search. And then I found something about yoga, Hatha yoga, something about a little bit of meditation, vegetarian food. So I start my journey and slowly, slowly, I was starting to meditate. I, I, I didn't know exactly what was meditation, but reflection no i was putting uh, classical music and was very calm and, and trying to change all these thoughts in my mind and my mind was running very fast and after two years of searching and doing little things it seems like i was prepared for something more and then i i meet the brahma kumaris through a person who uh, i meet a friend and he invited me to the center and then I was there and, and they invited me to meditate because I was already used to meditation. So I sat in the meditation room and suddenly in two minutes, it was like a shower of peace. I would say, or more than a shower, like a cascade of peace, no? Something very strong, boom. And I, my mind was completely quiet. My heart was peaceful. And I was aware, it's not like I was sleeping, I was, even with my eyes open, because I was thinking, what, what is happening here? What is this? So when, when I finished the meditation, I say, what is this? And the person who was guiding me the meditation, she said, I don't know what is this, because she didn't know. <laughs> and I said, I had very deep experience of, of peace. I want to know more. Then she said, well, the course is next week. And I say, no, no, next week, no. I, I have to learn more now. So she said, okay, come tomorrow at seven in the morning. And I say, yes, I will go. And then I start the course and every day was a very nice experience, very nice, especially of peace, deep peace, something like I, I never experienced in my life. And after that, I, I continue and still my journey is here. And I have to say that uh, I've received also this gift as a blessing because I didn't have made so much effort. And sometimes then the journey is like this. No? <laughs> Not always you experience this deep uh, peace. But at the beginning, it was like a gift that I needed to change my life. And when I had this taste of peace, this state of inner silence, I was enjoying so much that I say, I want more of this and I have to cultivate this. So finally, after a few months, I made the decision in my mind, I don't want to lose this energy, this peaceful energy. So I will say no to other things that uh, steal my peace, but I will uh, keep my peace in myself because it's the, for me at that time was the best experience in my life, the best experience with a lot of difference. So now I, when I work with people, but also in the center when I give a course of meditation, my purpose is really to help people to get the same experience because I know that if they get this taste, uh, their life will change, their life will change, I'm sure. It's interesting that part of your story where you went back to your parents and said, look, I'm not feeling good. Can I can I come and stay and sort myself out? And I wonder if there is a connection with that and the need to actually love yourself enough yeah. to give yourself this experience of peace. Because a lot of people struggle with with feeling worthless, 
that mm. their sense of self isn't strong enough. They're yes. critical of themselves. Yes. They don't feel worthy. And exactly. they don't identify themselves as being someone who could possibly have a lovely meditation and feel peace because they actually don't like themselves enough to give exactly. themselves that experience. Mm -hmm. How do you overcome that, that lack of self-respect? Very important what you say, it's true. Um, myself, I, I developed this uh, self-respect and I've practiced for a long time. And one of the, the knowledge that it was very important for me at the beginning is the understanding that I was not this image, I was not this body, I was something more, something more spiritual. I was a conscious being. So at the beginning when I received this uh, information was really, I think in English you say mind-blowing, no? Something that <laughs> opened your mind and say, wow, this is, this is, this is wonderful. So I'm not this image, I, I, I'm not this personality, but I, have some, I am something more, something more deep. So I start to practice and I enjoy very much the practice just of say, saying to myself, I'm, I'm a peaceful being, I'm a conscious being. I like it very much, this thought, no, I'm a conscious being. So I can think, I can decide, I can choose. And then I was developing this self-respect about seeing myself as a worthy person, competent person with a lot of qualities and it took time but now I feel myself much more confident. So I do the same with people. Uh, as I said I have a daughter and with my daughter I've practiced a lot this to have to believe in her, to have a positive vision of her, to see all the time the possibilities that she can do, the potential. And I asked her if she has felt this energy and she said to me always yes I feel special protection. I feel always that some energy is protecting me and, and helping me to move forward. So sometimes you need to express to the people what they, they don't see in themselves. And it's very simple in fact. And you say, you are wonderful. You are really great. You are really powerful. You're, you can do whatever you want. And if you say with your heart, with, with intention, with love, it reaches the person and it touches the heart and then the person starts to feel that there is a possibility to see themselves differently. I remember my daughter, she, she was in a situation and she made a big mistake and well, many things happened and all the family, her family was, you know, saying to her, what have you done, this, 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 this and that. So I was waiting and I was waiting for a few weeks to phone her and then I phoned her where everything was calm and she picked the phone, hello, hello, how are you? Oh, you want to say the same that everyone is saying to me? I say, no, 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 please, no. I only want to say to you that you are wonderful, that you are beautiful, that I love you so much. And I'm sure that you have learned so many things about this. So it was a deep silence <laughs> to the other side of the phone. I think that she was really moved by that. No? And just hang that, and I hang the phone. So she felt this energy, no? And I try to always to convey her this, you, you are beautiful, no matter what you do, you make mistakes. I've made mistakes, a lot of mistakes. So what? You, continue, you, you still are beautiful and you're powerful and you have a lot of potential. So she has developed this, also this self-respect. Sometimes we need someone to help us. So because I've needed that, I try to do this with, with the other people also. You mentioned that you are a peaceful being mm -hmm. and that you're not the personality. You're, you're kind of moving your hands around your body and saying that you're not this. Mm -hmm. Who are you in that case and, and what are you? Mm -hmm. Well, um, my practice has been to really understand that I'm a energy, a conscious being, pure energy that is like the life force of this body. I move the body. I use the body, I look through the body, I hear through the body, I express myself through the body, but I'm not the body. So this change makes me feel completely different as before, because before I was, as everyone, very identified with the body, no? It is what, this is what I see, this is what I am, this is what it's here. But then I start to see that there is a difference. So understanding that I am a soul, no? Energy, and the natural nature, the, the innate nature, is peace. So when you start to accept, because this is the main thing, to accept that this information is true and work with this information in meditation and say to yourself, I'm a soul, 
I'm a peaceful being. My natural nature is peace. I'm light. I'm not this body. So it's just a new conversation with yourself. And we can call it affirmations. Affirmations, but it's not a suggestion. Because before I thought, well, this is just a suggestion. You, you talk to yourself and you suggest to yourself and things happen. But not with the time I've observed that is a reality. That you become something different. You, you behave in a different way. You move in the world in a different way. Because you understand that you are there behind your eyes, looking the world through your eyes, expressing through your world. And also the also very important thing for me was that when I started to understand that I, I am a soul and, and conscious being different from the body and different from my personality and I can influence my body and personality, but the others are also this, the same. So I start to see my daughter as a soul and I start to talk to her like this. So we create a very nice relationship. And she starts to understand also the soul. And now she has two children. And when her small daughter uh, was born and she had very strong character, one day she said to me, I don't know who is this soul. <laughs> so she had these thoughts in her mind and she, she talks in this way also. Of, of course, she's not practicing so much meditation now because she's very busy with her business and her family. But still she has this uh, understanding and influence also her life, the understanding of something more. And her vision to her daughter, her, her son, it's a little bit different also than normal people. So it's really a very powerful understanding of who you are. You're pointing here to the center of the forehead. Yes. When you talk about yourself as a soul, what's the significance of that? Well, for me, uh, you understand that you know, in India, they call it about the third eye, no? this uh, the point of energy. And this uh, chakra also is here, very important. So the soul is there. The point of energy is there. There we create the thoughts. We create the, the, we see the world. It's like there is a position here inside where you can the control, um, place of control, no? Where you control your, your body. And if you, if you are able to put your attention in this point, you will see that there is a lot of energy there. And the more you practice, the more you practice, and you stay there, you feel that the body is very big, and you are there, and from there you move this body. And it's a completely different sensation. And it's a very nice sensation, because you can be more relaxed, because you are also aware of the tension that you are creating during the day. Because from there it's like you are... Go, uh, ruling all your kingdom. So it's a very nice practice to uh, put your attention inside and try to connect with an energy which is uh, in the forehead, but behind, not behind your eyes, inside, inside yourself. And from there, try to see the world. Try to see like an observer and observe the world through the lens of your eyes. And it's a very nice practice that helps you to be a little bit detached. No? Another thing you said, which I liked, was that um, that that you are peace, that mm. you're not looking for an experience that you're going to attach to the outside of of your being, but actually, when you drill right into the heart of of you, this being, actually, the original experience is peace. So you're getting back to an original part of yourself in some ways. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I'm more and more convinced that this is our original nature. Uh, before, I was interested also in psychology. And there is a part of psychology that they say that uh, you are selfish and you are violent per nature. It's, this is na human nature. And, and, and then we can change, but this is our nature. So when I hear here in the Brahma Kumaris that our nature is peace, our original quality, you are peace. In fact, the energy of the soul is peace. Oh, it was really very, very, very nice information. But then I ne you need to practice. I was practicing again and again. And now I can feel that really peace is my nature. Peace is my state. Peace is my normal state. And when I go out from this consciousness is when I get into contact with other energies that are not so nice. But when I go inside myself and connect with my true nature and I say to myself, I am a peaceful being, I am a soul, I am a conscious being, immediately this energy is like 
uh, is activated. So my understanding is that everyone has this peace, everyone has this energy, but it's not activated. It's like it's like you have a uh, one million pounds or, or euros in your bank, but you don't remember the number of the account and you don't know where is the office of the bank. So it's like you don't have nothing. But someone comes and says to you, okay, this is the number of your account. This is the office. You can go there and you have one million dollars or one million pounds. <gasps> they go there. Whoa, it's here. So they connect and then emerge and then they can use this energy. So with peace is same. We have this much more amount of peace inside ourselves, this energy. But we need to go inside. And if you are outside, you don't connect with this energy. This is, this is a secret. If and what is the yes. secret of the connection between peace, experiencing this original quality of peace, and the feeling of, of power, connecting to mm. your own power? Yeah. How do these two relate to each other? Yes, uh, very, related very, very nicely and very powerfully, because when you connect with this inner, internal energy, and I call it energy because it has different expressions, and when you connect with the energy of the soul, with the, your original energy, one expression is peace, you feel calm and relaxed. But another expression is power. Power is like a, a energy that you have that helps you to face situations in life. Not, it's not a power of violence, it's the contrary. It's a power that you can be very strong, very firm, very stable inside and very soft outside. So you can tolerate a lot outside and being soft because you are very strong inside and because you have cultivate and you have uh, activate this energy of peace that allows you to be really stable, really at peace. It doesn't matter what are the circumstances. Even if there is violence outside, you tap into this energy and you can stay there and things are happening outside, but you still are there. And from there, you can influence outside. So you develop a big power of tolerance Tolerance is not, um, uh, it, it's, it's connected with love, you know? so you, you, you accept other people, you mold to other situations, you tolerate, you tolerate different difficulties, and also you have more power to take good decisions, you feel more, um, you feel more courage to take decisions onto these things that people are not, not doing, and also you have the courage to say no to many things, that many people have not the courage to say no, because then they don't please other people, so they will reject me. So when you are connected with this power inside yourself, then you feel power in the sense that you don't need the, the, the I don't know, the, the pleasing no of others. You don't need to please others to love you. You are yourself, and you are uh, authentic, and you are as you are, because you don't expect nothing from them, and you only give to them whatever you have because you are stable in this energy. So what happens is then they, they love you more <laughs> because they feel that you are authentic, that you are real, and they see clearly how you are. They accept it or not, but this is how I am. So it's very nice when people see you as an authentic person. And this comes from this inner energy of peace because this creates this stability and uh, firmness, no? I always uh, have the image in my mind of the... I use metaphors in my mind, no? Images, because it helps me to create experience also. So my metaphor is the beacon or the lighthouse. So I see a lighthouse and I, I see myself like becoming this lighthouse, no? Like very stable, very firm, very grounded. And then these beautiful pictures that we have seen that these waves not coming to the to the lighthouse and the sea and everything, but the light was ha lighthouse still there, firm, secure, giving light, giving support to the to the to the boats, and then the sea comes down and still remains there, no? continue with his job. So just uh, remembering this um, this image helps me to create this energy this stability inside myself no this is why i love peace because peace is not something i don't know in english fluffy something not strong no something fluffy, very yeah. soft no 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 
a, a meditative person, a peaceful person, is really a very strong person. The other thing is a very like superficial this. piece. Hmm? Yes? I like this um, metaphor of the lighthouse because whilst the lighthouse itself is experiencing the light of the lighthouse, it's also shining out into the night and other people are also feeling that light. Yes. And I'm picking up from what you're saying that it's not a selfish activity to be peaceful. No. Because by you doing that, others will be influenced. And I'm wondering if you have any kind of examples of, of how being peaceful yourself does have a direct impact on the world around you. Yes, many. Especially in the professional level, which is a place which is not normal to talk about these things. But I remember when I was working in Expo 92 in Sevilla, was one of my best jobs because I was uh, coordinating a program of uh, art program with different artists putting different uh, pieces of art in different places. No? So I was helping them, doing the contracts, working with them also, and very interesting uh, job. And we were two. It was my director. She was a, a young woman. She was at that time 30-something, and I was also 31, something like that. So we were together. She was very smart. She was very, she, she worked a lot. And she was doing all the job. And, but she wanted to me with, be with her all the time. So I was with her everywhere, but she was talking, doing, resolving, acting, working. And I said one day to, to her, uh, look, Teresa, I remember her name. Uh, I can stay in the office and do other work because you are resolving everything. So I don't know why you need me. And she said, I like your presence. And I want you to be with me because you give me calm and you give me security. So I say, okay, they pay me for my presence. <laughs> so I was with her, just sitting beside her and staying there and creating calm because I said, she will do everything. She is, this is her character, so she will do anyway. So what I can do, just send her vibrations, be peaceful, create this atmosphere because this is what she appreciates. And at the end of the day, she always said to me, thank you for your presence. Every day at night when we went uh, home, thank you for your presence. So I thought, well, they, they are paying me for my presence. <laughs> this was a surprise for me. But this was a proof that your energy is affecting others and is helping others to do their job better. So in fact, it's very practical because you are giving an energy that they don't have and they can do the work that and they do things that maybe you cannot, you are not able so also to do because they are very smart. So both energies together, they get very good results. Mm -hmm. You talked earlier when you were a child that you had these conversations with an unseen presence, presence. A, a, a light that was greater than yourself. How has that part of your childhood experience moved into your meditation experience as an adult? Well, I, I lost this part, as I said, for a period of my life. And then when I start to meditate and change my, change my, my life and, and start again to, to be more connected with myself, uh, the first experience was peace, as I said. But then again, I start to have this, um, this feel inside myself, this feeling of connection with someone. And uh, practicing more meditation and, and also with the knowledge of the Brahma Kumaris, I start to understand that this is also a real being that we can relate with him and we can have a nice relationship. And now I think for me, it's like a friend. Uh, it's someone that is very close to me. Um, I never feel alone. So this is also a, a, a proof because I was feeling very alone at some point in my life even being with people. But my heart was sad and the feeling of loneliness was very strong. So after starting to meditate and reconnecting with this being, internal conversation and internal experience of relationship, then this feeling of sadness, this feeling of loneliness disappeared completely. So I was surprised because then I, I thought again, this is not my imagination. This is not a, just a, a story that I tell myself. Or that, like some people were saying to me, no, you are trying to escape reality, no? You are creating something 
because you don't want to face reality. And I say, no, this is true because it's giving me an experience of company. It's giving me an experience of, of real joy and, and satisfaction. So I continue to cultivate this, uh, this relationship. And for me, it's now it's very natural to have an internal dialogue with myself. I've learned a lot to talk uh, positively to myself in a very nice way and compassionate way and be my, fan, my good friend. But also I have a lot of conversation with this being and I feel that this being uh, has a very uh, um, positive vision towards me. So sometimes when, when I feel not so well, because as I said before, this journey, I thought at the beginning that this journey will be like this, but then no, after 30 years, you see, <laughs> there are many movements, ups and downs. But when I connect with this being, I always feel that he has such a beautiful vision towards me. Like I said before, no? he always see my beauty, my potential, and not my weaknesses. So I expose myself every day, if I can, in meditation to the vision of this being so that I raise my self-respect, raise my self-esteem and connect again, not only with my soul, with the soul, with the energy, but also connect with, call it the supreme soul, call it light, call it whatever you want. But for me, it's a very, um, I would say, very close relationship of friendship, of friendship. Mm -hmm. Well, that leads us very nicely into an experience of what you're talking about, an experience of meditation. So can we just take a few moments and maybe you could just speak your thoughts as you're Indeed. meditating and we can join together in an experience very of good. this piece that we're talking about. Thank you. Very good. So find a good position, back straight. And relax a little bit your body. Maybe your shoulders, you need to move them a little bit. And your back. And connect with your breathing. The breathing allows you to go from outside to inside because it's connected with the outside and the inside. And it helps you to slowly, slowly enter inside yourself. So observe your breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. And with every breath, you can start to connect with this moment, this present moment, because it's the most precious moment of your life. In fact, it's the only moment that exists, the now, present. So breathe in, breathe out, and connect with the present, with the moment. And now go a little bit more inside yourself and observe your feelings. How do you feel right now? Just observe them. Don't judge them. Don't analyze them. Just be the observer and describe what is happening inside yourself. How do you feel right now? And now, observe your thoughts. The mind is all the time creating thoughts. But you can become the observer of your mind. You can imagine that your mind is like a blue, clear sky. And that your thoughts are like clouds. Clouds appear in the sky of your mind and they disappear. So change your thoughts into clouds, observe them and allow them to go and be there like the observer, like the presence behind your thoughts. Thoughts are just thoughts. You give them life when you connect with them. But if you observe them, they are just clouds that they come and they go. 
And now go a little bit deeper inside yourself and start to be aware of yourself, the observer. And observe yourself like a, like a point of light, like a beautiful star in the middle of your forehead. You are there. You are a beautiful light shining in the middle of your forehead. Allow your attention to focus on that point. And when you connect with this point, this point of energy, you can start to feel a beautiful feeling of peace, of calmness, of serenity, because this is the energy of your soul, of this light, of the light of your consciousness. And you can repeat inside yourself, I am light. I am a peaceful being. I am a soul. And just observe the impact of these thoughts in your mind. I am a peaceful soul. I am light. I am energy. If you maintain your attention in these thoughts, you will see how you will experience this beautiful energy of peace. And you will observe how your mind becomes calm, more silent. You will enjoy this beautiful experience. I am a peaceful being. I am light. I am a peaceful soul. And now, imagine that the beautiful light descends over you and fills your mind and your heart with the energy of love and compassion. Beautiful light descends on you and fills you with love and compassion. And just be there, connected with yourself and connected with this beautiful light. Nothing to do, nothing to resolve. Just open your mind and open your heart to the experience of the light. Just be there. Enjoy the connection. Allow the light to clean your heart, clean your mind. And be there for a moment in silence. Very good. And now come back and maintain this energy inside yourself and use it in your actions, in your activity. And breathe deeply and you can come back. Thank you so much. I said at the beginning that I would guarantee that by the end we would be really experiencing peace and that's absolutely the case. Fantastic. Would Thank you, you like much. to leave us with a little seed thought that we can carry away that maybe when a situation arises and we begin to lose this experience, something that we can think or say that will bring us back into this beautiful feeling that we're enjoying so much in this moment? Well, I would say, remember that you are the creator of your experiences. You are the creator of your thoughts. 
So it doesn't matter what happens externally, become the creator of your thoughts and create the best experience. So create the experience of soul conscious, being a soul, and create the experience of connecting with the light. And you will see that this will help you. So we will carry the light with us wherever we go. Enrique, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much for your you sharings much. on today's masterclass. You've given us a lot to think about, to go away and practice, and hopefully come back and experience more of the same uh, in the future. Thank you so much, Enrique. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you as well for joining us where you are. I hope you've enjoyed today's masterclass. It's um, it certainly left me feeling very peaceful indeed. There'll be another masterclass tomorrow in our series of 21 masterclasses. I hope you can join us for that. And in the meantime, I wish you uh, a wonderful day, a wonderful evening. Stay safe, keep calm, keep Om Shanti. I am a peaceful being with you and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. Twenty-one masterclasses in new consciousness. New ways of thinking, being and doing for the new you. Pioneering thinkers from countries right around the world. 